Painting Sky and Water Dry Brush on Moist Video Lesson by Vladimir London In this video, you'll discover how to paint sky and water using the Dry Brush on Moist watercolor technique. Here is the finished artwork I will get by the end of this video lesson. To start, I will do a quick sketch in graphite pencil on watercolour paper. First, I would like to divide the height of the artwork according to the golden ratio. This way, I can place the horizon line precisely according to the golden proportion. If you don't have golden mean calipers, you don't have to buy them. A golden proportion can easily be calculated by multiplying or dividing any dimension by 1.62. However, art is not mathematics, so there is no need to calculate anything. You can just draw what pleases your eye. Nevertheless, just to demonstrate how the golden calipers can be used, I am measuring some key points of the composition in this artwork. There is no one strict rule on how to build a composition. This depends on what you would like to depict, and what you want the main talking point of your artwork to be. In this picture, I have reserved the biggest place for the sky to have more space for the clouds. Their shape is also a part of this composition, which is why I am marking down the key points for clouds using the golden mean calipers. Once again, this is not something I would normally do when making an artwork. Instead, I might draw several sketches and locate details as I think necessary, drawing freehand, without any calipers. Then, if in doubt, I might double-check the proportions. To my surprise, I often find that the compositions which look better to my eyes are the ones with more golden proportions. Also, when painting landscapes, I do not usually draw clouds on the sky, because they are done freehand by brush during painting. However, because this video lesson is special, and will include the topic of how to paint clouds using the dry brush on moist watercolour painting technique, I would like you to see what clouds I will be doing. This painting technique requires a bit more planning and precision, and therefore it will be helpful to have outlines of clouds in place. I would like to keep a wide frame around the artwork unpainted, and will therefore protect the paper margins with a masking fluid. Before doing that, I applied a wet soap onto a cheap synthetic brush, which will make cleaning this brush easier. Unfortunately, I ran out of transparent masking fluid from Windsor & Newton, and will use the tinted one. A tinted masking fluid is clearly visible on white paper, and therefore it is easier to apply it. However, because it is tinted, it will conflict with the colours of the artwork. It is not my favourite, but until I buy a new one, this will do. When the masking fluid is fully dry, I will prepare the watercolour sheet for painting. Here is a muslin cloth that is bigger than the sheet. I will wet it in clean water, making sure it is fully soaked. Then, I will squeeze the water out, unfold the cloth, and place it on the plastic board. 
By the way, using the muslin cloth is totally optional. You can use the colour painting technique I am about to demonstrate for you just as well without the cloth. The next step is to place the watercolour paper sheet face side down and thoroughly wet its reverse side with a flat wide brush or a piece of natural or synthetic sponge. You may leave the sheet for several minutes to soak up water and then turn it over face side up, placing it on the wet muslin cloth. If you do not use the cloth, just place it on the plastic board. Now, the front side has to be moistened as well with clean water. I am using a flat wide brush to do so. I will leave the paper to dry for 10 or 15 minutes, waiting for the moment when it will become moist. For painting, I will be using a natural hair flat brush from Escoda. This brush takes less water than a round brush of the same width. Now I need to prepare a mix for the clouds. Their colour will be cold and grey, so I will mix a dark blue pigment with violet and raw sienna paints. I will not talk much about pigments, not only because this is a topic for colour theory, but also because you may or may not have exactly the same paints as I do. This is not about what paints to use, but what colours to achieve. And the colour that I am looking for is a chromatic grey that is quite cold and has a bluish shade. There are many ways to mix such a colour. If you don't know how to do it, the topic you may want to revisit is how to obtain neutral greys by mixing complementary colours. This is fully explained in the colour theory video lessons of the Watercolour Academy course. I have loaded my brush with the grey mix and absorbed excess water from the brush's belly with a paper napkin. The brush contains very little water and the pigment is only loaded on its tip. 